There's no denying it, the state of the Xbox brand isn't exactly at its peak right now. That's a shame to see because in itself, the Xbox One is far from a bad console. I found that out myself when buying one just last year. However, sales have been decreasing, mainly caused by PlayStation 4's heavy competition, with even the Nintendo Switch looking to surpass them eventually. Gamers are complaining about disappointing first-party support due to the few games coming out, but also their reception, look at Sea of Thieves, which just released to disappointing reviews. Then again, it's no wonder that we're at this point, as the last few years have been rough for Microsoft to say the least. Fortunately, with the One X having just launched to the market, the company can now again focus on the things that truly matter. However, the next generation is on the horizon, and as I discussed in a video a few weeks ago, the PlayStation 5 may be closer than we actually think, which will force Microsoft to play their cards too. The next Xbox is going to be interesting to discuss, but at the same time, I've come to realize it'll only play a part of the bigger picture that the company has in mind. Time is slowly but surely running out, and they're gearing up for the next few years with a completely different strategy in mind. It's without a doubt that Microsoft is making preparations for a future beyond consoles. In 2014, Phil Spencer was assigned by Microsoft as the new leader of Xbox, and ever since, we've seen a large shift in the vision for the platform. This was obviously a consequence of the huge problems that Xbox faced at the beginning of this generation. We all know what happened. First of all, there was that awful review event, which seemed to focus more on multimedia than actual games. The stories around DRM and Always Online, followed by Don Metric outright telling gamers to buy a 360 if they didn't like it, only added fuel to the fire. The console launched at $100 more than the PS4, while being less powerful at the same time. This was because of the Kinect that came bundled in, thus giving you no choice but to be forced to own one. Gamers turned against them, and whether you looked at YouTube or Twitter, they'd constantly spread negativity in regards to the Xbox One, and that definitely wasn't undeserved. Microsoft found themselves in difficult times. And sales of the console reflected this situation, especially when compared to the PS4. Microsoft realized that in order for Xbox to retain a bright outlook, a significant shift was needed. Don Metric and some of the other higher-ups at Xbox left the company in the years to come, with Phil Spencer taking over that leadership. Since then, the company has tried to repair some of the damage that was done, and it's the moment where we've really seen the first plans for the future come to fruition. Of course, the DRM and Always Online plans were scrapped already before launch. The Kinect even went from being sold separately to not being manufactured anymore altogether. We've seen the introduction of the Elite Controller, giving gamers even more personal preference options, while being optional in itself for purchase. The Xbox One S was a great improvement over the initial system, with its much slicker design and of course the price tag, which had over time already been reduced to a much more competitive level. Now that's as far as the hardware goes, but in my personal opinion, where we've really seen some drastic improvements has been on the service side of things. Some of these moves were genuinely innovative and most of all consumer friendly, putting the wishes of the gamers at the forefront. Backwards compatibility was one of the earliest of these additions. With the features still lacking on the PS4 as of right now, it undoubtedly increased the value of the system, being able to play not only 360, but original Xbox titles as well. Regardless of the catalogue not being as vast as you'd want it to be, with certain high-profile games that are sadly still missing, it's great to allow gamers to play old games on newer hardware too. One of the most exciting recent announcements is of course the Xbox Game Pass. For just $10 a month, you're able to download and play as much as you want out of the library of games that's offered. In my opinion, it's an awesome idea, and of course the comparisons are easily made with a service like Netflix, but this time around, for games. Now that Microsoft also has plans to make every single one of its own games, like Crackdown 3 and the next Halo and Gears installments, available on day one, you can clearly see the potential for something huge is there. 
But while I'm a fan of the idea of the Game Pass for these reasons, the reality is that the value isn't there yet. When you gloss over the current library, you'll immediately see that over half the games are 360 titles. And if we're talking about third party games, the most relevant ones you'll find are games like Mad Max, Dirt Rally and the NBA 2K game from last year. Yeah, that's just not enough. I can only hope that this is something that will simply need time. Of course, the additional first party titles is a great first step, but for this service to really be a game changer, a lot more will need to happen. Then of course there's the whole PC integration. Every single Microsoft game developed in recent times can also be played on the PC, either via the Windows Store or in some cases even via Steam. For gamers that's a great thing as it means that the Xbox console itself isn't a necessity anymore. To make owning one more appealable though, the Play Anywhere program allows you to buy the game once but play it across the platforms you own. There's also been a huge push for crossplay, which doesn't just mean we've been able to play certain games together via Xbox and PC, but even smartphones or the Nintendo Switch. It's great for gamers that they now get the choice of either buying an Xbox to play first party games or simply play them on the PC, and it obviously makes Microsoft more money too. The one downside of it though, and it is an undeniable one, is that it drastically brings down the value of owning an Xbox, which will only hurt the console in the long run. And that's the thing, once you look at what Microsoft is doing here, what they're trying to set up, that's the moment you realize the next console itself isn't all that important anymore. What they are trying to do is create a service, turn Xbox into a platform across systems. It's a completely different strategy than the one by PlayStation and Nintendo. Those companies still seem to focus on the more traditional approach, revolving everything around one hardware platform and supporting it for years before moving on to the next one. Microsoft now clearly looks at an Xbox console as a way to access the Xbox service, but whether you play on an original model, a One X or a PC, that's become unimportant to them. I think it's very interesting and time will tell if it's a strategy that will prove to be beneficial. But it's exactly why I believe the next Xbox isn't going to be all that exciting to discuss, as it will simply serve as an inevitable hardware upgrade, an option for the gamers that want it. The release date should likely be around the same time as that of the PlayStation 5, meaning at the end of 2019 or 2020. This is for the simple reason that it needs to compete when the new generation finally kicks off. Otherwise you'd get in a situation where Sony gets a head start and Microsoft will have to play catch up and they wouldn't want to do that. What Microsoft will most likely focus on is a message that sets them apart, that tells gamers why to pick an Xbox over the new PlayStation. And that's going to be the more consumer friendly approach, explaining the services that will now have hopefully evolved and could prove to be a great value proposition. Games will still be at the forefront, because let's be real, it's what gamers care about the most, but these extra features could still prove to be of high importance. Add it all up together, the Xbox might seem like a genuinely cheaper option, giving you more freedom in how you want to purchase and where you want to play your games. The price and specs is what I think will be the most interesting to see, because it's where Microsoft has kind of backed itself into a corner. The Xbox One X is an expensive piece of hardware already, one that's quite future proof but would therefore still be similarly priced to a regular new console in 2 or 3 years. What I'm trying to say is that if the PS5 launches at a $400 price tag, it's going to be hard for the new Xbox to make a significant leap. Because of that, I wonder if we're going to see multiple models of the next Xbox. It would completely fall in line with the strategy of giving gamers more options. We could see a cheaper model to directly compete with the PS5, while a more expensive Xbox could show a huge graphical leap over its competitors. They'd obviously play the same games and run the same services, but could give gamers the choice how much money they're willing to spend to get the best experience possible. It's similar to the smartphone and PC model, and with the mid-generation hardware upgrade introduced already, it seems inevitable that that's where we're going eventually. Whether the system will be backwards compatible or not is a no-brainer. Obviously it will be, there's simply no going back from that now. I could see the controller be another improvement over the one we have right now, but I don't expect revolutionary changes outside of the ones mentioned in the PS5 video already. Now there is something that I could see make quite an impact. 
Microsoft was the company that originally started charging gamers for online multiplayer on the 360. Since then, both PlayStation and even Nintendo have followed suit. Now, PC gamers would obviously never accept something like this to happen, and there is always Steam that doesn't allow Xbox to be in a position to make a power play. Therefore, I wonder if we're gonna see them stop charging for Xbox Live altogether. Not only would it make sense with their family of devices idea, it will definitely be another huge reason for gamers to go with Xbox as the cheaper alternative next time around. Only time will tell. Ultimately, I think it's easy to see that the next Xbox in itself won't necessarily be at the center of it all. Microsoft will look at it as the preferred but one of the multiple options to enter the Xbox ecosystem. That's why the sales numbers of the device will be secondary to the overall popularity of the platform. That's what's gonna truly matter to them. But at the end of the day, what it all comes down to is the content. The games that make Xbox stand out over its competitors. It's undeniable that Microsoft has a huge problem here. Not only because of the amount of games, the quality is often just not high enough. There is one huge reason for this. Microsoft lacks a great number of studios compared to their competitors. While they have some very successful IP in Halo, Forza and Gears of War, the consequence is that these few studios are repeatedly being used to make the same games over and over again. For the last few years, the company has been struggling to bring other exclusive games to the platform, constantly having to rely on independent studios to develop exclusively for the Xbox. Some of those games were received well, like Cuphead and Sunset Overdrive, others missed the boat. We've seen how Lionhead was shut down, how Skillbound got cancelled after years of development. Games like Recall and the most recent example, Sea of Thieves, were received with very mixed reception, which wouldn't be too bad had the list of exclusives not have been so small already. During the years of the 360, there were plenty of studios that were in for a deal that was no problem with the advantage the Xbox had. But now that they're behind, you already see companies like Remedy and Insomniac that just don't care anymore. They immediately left after their first projects failed. 2017 gave us the worst lineup in Xbox history, with Halo Wars 2 and Forza 7 as the only titles published by Microsoft. And 2018 is definitely not looking to be much better. State of Decay 2 and Crackdown 3 are just not gonna cut it. Sure, it's all a matter of taste, but let's be real. For most gamers out there, they don't even compare to the titles offered by Nintendo and PlayStation. It sucks because the Xbox is a good console, don't get it twisted. I bought my own in 2017 and was positively surprised with the overall user experience, the online network, services, the controller and the few unique games I did get to play. I honestly really wouldn't call the system inferior to a PS4 if it wasn't for this one glaring issue. There is just not a lot to play that you can already play somewhere else. And that's exactly the thing that makes a console truly stand apart. If Microsoft wants to take the future seriously, it needs to not just evolve in the services that it's trying to set up, we need to see studios being acquired or started from the ground up. It's necessary and they know it too. I believe in services like Game Pass, that they could play a crucial role and set Xbox apart, but the content needs to be there. Look at Netflix, how that service grew once its streaming platform started, but blew up when the company began creating its own exclusive shows. Content is the key to everything. Sony and Nintendo have known this for the longest, they spent years establishing a network of developers. It's why their game systems are so popular and will continue to be, because who would want to miss out on God of War, Mario, Uncharted or The Legend of Zelda? The list goes on and on. I could see so many gamers be prepared to buy an Xbox if there was that one amazing story-driven game, that one huge action RPG or that one fresh idea we have not seen before. But somehow we're just not seeing it at all and that's a real shame. The future of Xbox is still a very uncertain one for me. While I can clearly see some great work being done, I just fear that the focus won't be where it really should be at. Actions need to be taken now, because the next generation is just a few years away and we know how long it can take to make a game these days. 
This discussion has been going on for a while already, and still having heard no news about any changes of Xbox expanding its network, I really hope that E3 will be a moment with positive news in this regard. Only time will tell. The next Xbox will be a great console, but will it offer enough for them to fight itself back into the race? That's the million dollar question. It's clear that Microsoft is going in a fresh direction, one that doesn't revolve around a single console anymore, but invites as many gamers as possible to join the platform, giving us plenty of options in where to play our games. Now, all that's left is offering the games worth playing, and that may prove to be the biggest task yet. Thanks a lot everyone for watching yet another episode in my in-depth gaming series. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, help me out by liking the video, sharing it on forums or with your friends, or by subscribing to the channel if you're new. In order for me to keep going, please consider helping me out with a small donation on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash robingaming. Not only will you show up in the credits like all the people displayed on screen, you'll get rewarded as well with early access to these videos, a monthly Q&A, and I let my patrons decide what the next video will be about. Your support is much appreciated. With that being said, I'd like to thank you a lot for watching and hope to see you again next time.